Hello YouTube, it's me Brittany and today I'm going to talk to you guys about avoiding and dealing with being clocked in public and I'll explain that in a second but before I do I want to thank all of you who have already subscribed, I love every single one of you, thank you so much for being here. Also if this is your first time watching, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I do all types of trans and LGBT related videos, also I keep you guys updated on all of the things happening in my comedy career as best as I can, um, but you can't do any of that unless you hit the subscribe button. So thanks so much for being here. Now, what I'm really talking about when I say avoiding and dealing with being clocked in public. So some of you may already know what this means, but basically being clocked is someone basically recognizing that you're trans or recognizing your gender that you were assigned at birth out in public and maybe calling you out or you know I don't want to say calling you out that's a horrible way of saying it but like you know just like outing you to other people who may be, may or may not have been aware that you were trans or anything like that. So um, this kind of video really kind of relates to more girls who are living in a stealth world. So um, however, I will tell you that personally, I never ever thought that I would ever be able to live stealth as a trans woman. Um, I thought that I would always be unpassable. So for some of you girls who are out there going, I'm never going to pass, I'm never going to pass, give it time. Um, because with hormones and just all types of life, things are going to change and, and, and you're going to learn, you're going to expand your knowledge on how, how, to, how to do makeup and hair and all those types of things. So just give it time because if you'd have asked me three years ago if I could be living stealth the way I am now, um, I would have said there's no fucking way. Um, but now I do live for the most part fairly stealth, you know, considering I still fly a flag on my book bag and most of the days. But Nine times out of ten, nobody can tell that I'm a transgender woman whenever I'm out in public, and I very rarely get clocked. Now, it did recently happen, which is why I am bringing up this topic in this video, because I kind of wanted to talk about it and how I kind of respond to those types of things. Now, first, I want to tell you guys how I try to avoid those things. Now, before I knew that I could really pass as well as I do now, and that I can live in this kind of stealth world that I do now, I really had these kinds of techniques that I used in order to try to avoid being clocked or at least avoid noticing I've been clocked because um, that that to me you know somebody can clock me and they can be talking about me behind my back and honestly I could care less if I got my headphones in I'm in my own goddamn world and nobody's gonna bother me so that that's one of the things you know I also really kind of keep a low profile like I try not to like I don't, like, not about, like, fashion, like, you do your fashion thing, be you, you know, be the beautiful you you want to be, like, I'm not telling you not to do that, but what I'm saying is, like, I'm not, like, running into a bus and, like, causing a scene, you know, like, I'm the type of person that gets on the bus, my head down, I get in my seat, I, I get on my phone, I mind my own business, and I'm generally on my headphones, um, and I personally, one of my biggest, biggest pet peeves of all time um, that drives me insane is when somebody tries to disturb me when I have my headphones in. So I wear my headphones out in public 90% of the time um, when I go grocery shopping, when I do all types of things. And for the reason for this is because I realized that a long time ago that people like to say crude and rude th rude things to you, especially when you're young or in your trans years, trans years and you're not as passable. They like to say really rude and crude things to you or maybe to their friends or whoever they're with. Try to say it really quietly as you walk by them or maybe as you're standing around them, but it doesn't work. You hear it. So this is why I wear headphones almost everywhere at this point because if I'm in my own world, I don't really care what other people are doing and the headphones really just kind of put me into my own world. And the only only fucking time that you should ever disturb anybody who's wearing headphones out in public is if somebody is about to murder them. I, and I'm being 100% serious. The person that clocked me the other day disrupted me on the phone or, or disrupted me on the bus and came up to me and tried and asked me a stupid question about whether the bus had Wi-Fi. This is not a legitimate reason to ask me to take my headphones out of my ears for no reason. That answer, that question could have been answered by the fucking bus driver. Go ask them because my job is not to fucking help you. I'm sorry. But anyways, um, uh, it's just, it drives me fucking nuts. Like, I have my headphones in for a reason. The only fucking reason you should be getting my headphones out is if you're yanking them out and saying, Yo, run, motherfucker, someone's coming to kill you. 
then I'm like, oh, thanks. I will rip my headphones out. And I'll be running all over the place because you have given me a legitimate reason to stop listening and get into the real world and not into my my own self world, basically. So, um, you know, that's just kind of my technique with a little bit of my own humor and uh, ad libbing fun fun stuff into that. But like, of how I kind of try to avoid being clocked. Also, like. I really have worked hard on doing hair and makeup and making sure that I, I look the best that I can look every time I go out in public, at least in my younger years. Now I'm way too lazy because I go days sometimes without putting makeup on my face because I'm just lazy. Yeah, but anyways. Um, and then the next thing I really kind of want to address is dealing with that. So I was clocked the other day and there were multiple ways that I could have dealt with that situation. Um, and and there's negative and positive ways and neutral ways that you can take care you can handle that situation of somebody clocking you in public but the first thing you need to do really before you can really decide how you're going to react to it is to assess the situation and yes you don't have a lot of time to make this assess of the situation but generally what you're assessing in is is something that can be assessed in a quick quick manner like um like the person who's clocking you. For instance, if you're on, I'm gonna use a public bus because I ride the bus quite often. But if you're on a public bus and let's say an eight year old child looks at you and says, are you a boy? Or something like that. In this situation, it hurts. It definitely hurts. I get it. Like I feel that struggle. I feel that pain. I know exactly what you're going through. But that's a child. And that child doesn't necessarily know better on whether or not they should have asked that question. And their parents may reprimand them. Um, and, and I always tell the parents not to reprimand them, especially with children, anything yet less than 10, it gives me an opportunity to start a conversation with this child because children are the most absorbent learners there are. And not only are they absorbent, but they listen with compassion and they listen with, with the will to want to learn what you, what you are telling them. And so instead of getting angry at the situation with a child, on the bus, you know, in public, I'm not going to yell at this child because they just called me a boy. I'm going to give them a little information about what I, what I am. Like, no, I'm not a boy. I'm actually a girl, but I'm what's called transgender, which means that I was born with a boy body, but a girl brain. And so I take medicine to try to help that. So right now I'm in the middle of taking that medicine. So it's changing everything. So I kind of look like a boy maybe, but really I'm a girl. And 99% of the time, that child is going to understand fully what you just said. They may be a little confused and have a little bit more questions, but that is a very, very basic description of what trans is that I explained to many, many children many, many times over. And almost every single one of them understands exactly what that means. Boy body, girl brain. Get it. And the, and then, and it's over for them. Now, that was a situation where I was clocked in public by a child. And I could have taken it an entirely negative way. And I could have yelled at the child. could have reprimanded the parent. Or da, 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 da. But I understand the situation. I accessed it really quickly and said, this is not the time to be aggressive. This is the time to to take a neutral stance and say, hey, let's educate this child. And maybe the parent in that same situation, the parent needed that little bit of education, educational help as well. So, um, and, and this has happened to me, so I'm not going to say like, it's not going to happen to you, but this has happened to me. And this is the best way I've ever, I've, I've ever had to deal with it. And I, I've never had a problem with it. Now, there are other different situations. Now, the example of what happened to me on the bus the other day was really a clueless, ignorant person. And I can be extremely rude and mean to this person and give them a bad impression of what trans people are. Or I can basically, you know, say, hey, you're wrong, go about your business and then leave, leave me alone. And then if they continue to pursue, then I can be more aggressive with whatever I feel is necessary. Uh, basically what happened uh, the other day was a gentleman came up to me on the bus while I had my headphones on and signaled to me that I needed to take my headphones off so that he could communicate with me because I don't understand why, why, why are we communicating? I don't know you, sir. Um, but anyways, so he signaled to me that I, he wanted to communicate. So I pulled the headphone down and he says, Hey, does the bus have Wi-Fi? And I was like, I don't know. 
I don't use the bus's Wi-Fi, if it did. Um, and then his response was, Oh, you have a really deep voice. Are you a guy? And the bus didn't have but maybe five other people on it, but I'm wearing a mask as well. And But still, that's not a fucking excuse. I'm wearing a tank top with short shorts. And I'm extremely tan right now because it's been very nice this week here. And I've been able to get very, very nice and tan. But anyways... So, misgendering me was a choice he made based off of what he heard my voice sounded like. And then, after he said, are you a guy, he then went on to say, like, I was, at first I said, no, I'm not a guy, I'm a woman, please go ask the bus driver, leave me alone. And then, he wanted to keep on with the conversation and be like, oh, I'm gay, I'm bisexual, it's okay, you can tell me. But now, I have assessed the situation wrong. At first, I thought he was just a clueless idiot. Now, I hear, I understand he's a goddamn douchebag. Because I don't feel anybody in the LGBT community would know, or sh you know, should, you know, should know that clocking a trans person in public is extremely wrong and extremely offensive. So, if, if, as soon as I told him I was a woman, that and, and on top of that, I said I'm a trans woman to him. After that, it should have been over. Walked upon his way. But instead, he continued the conversation. Now, every single person on the bus has heard that he's gay. It's okay if I'm a boy dressed like a girl, which I'm not. And so now, I'm pulling my headphones out all the way because I'm angry. Because now you've crossed the line and now it's time for me to react aggressively. And so I basically said, get the fuck away from me, leave me the fuck alone, go sit over there. And if you don't get away from me, I'm gonna fucking be physical, basically, is what I said. Um, and then he kind of went over and sat in the corner and got off two stops later, which was great because I was about to get off anyway and was going to walk the rest of the way home because I just didn't really want to be in that fucking bus anymore because that guy just kind of made me so angry. Now, if the conversation had ended with, I'm a trans woman, go ahead and ask the bus driver, they might help you, that, like, that, I, I clueless idiot, I don't need to be worried about, I don't need to be, but the fact that he pursued it, and pursued it claiming he was LGBT and it was okay for him to clock me because he was LGBT, it was, it was ridiculous, and that's where I'm like, alright, now you gotta, you gotta assess it differently and, and react differently, so there's, there's, there's ways to respond nicely and ways to respond neutrally and ways to respond aggressively, and it really comes down to assessing the situation of where you are, the person that is clocking you, um, now I hope that this doesn't ever happen to you. Now, I can't say that it won't, but I pray and hope that this doesn't ever happen to you or you never have to deal with it ever. That'd be awesome. Uh, but this video, I also hope, was helpful just in case you do have to, you know, deal with it in the future or trying to avoid it happening to you in the future. Um, so uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit subscribe. Um, once again, I love every single one of you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Remember, you can find me on Facebook at Brittany Rose, uh, Instagram at Brittany Rose as well, Twitter at Brittany Rose too. Um, find me on Activision and PlayStation at Green Eggs and Brit. Jesus, I got all types of logos you can find me at now. But anyways, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I love every single one of you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, everybody.